All You Need to Know, the Bloomberg Quint podcast that prepares you for the day's business. Good morning and thanks for listening in. This is the Daily Morning Update from Bloomberg Quint and I'm Alex Matthew. Today is the 26th of May. Even as economies around the world start moving in the direction of restarting, India's number of coronavirus cases saw a sharp spike over the past three days. The country added nearly 7,000 new cases in the 24 hours preceding 8 a.m. yesterday. That takes the total to just under 1.39 lakh. Maharashtra continues to have the highest number of cases with over 50,000. And globally, over 54 lakh people have contracted the disease and 3.4 lakh people have died on account of it. Now, despite the surge in new cases, civilian flight operations have resumed in all but two states. The Union Civil Aviation Minister Hardeep Singh Puri clarified late on Sunday evening that except Andhra Pradesh and West Bengal, airlines will operate limited flights to all other airports. Only 25 departures and 25 arrivals daily have been allowed from Mumbai, according to State Minister Nawab Malik. The state plans to gradually scale up operations at the Mumbai airport, which, as you probably know, is one of the busiest in the country. All other airports in the state can operate up to one-third of the approved summer schedule. If you're keen to find out the status of another state, do look up the story on the website bloombergquint.com. The Indian Railways will start 200 additional trains from the 1st of June to ferry passengers. Tickets will be sold online and through physical booking windows, according to Vinod Kumar Yadav, who is chairman of the railway board. Passengers will be screened at stations and only those without symptoms will be allowed to travel. Also, travellers will have to wear masks and also install the government's contact tracing application Arogya Setu on their smartphones. Moving on, in corporate news, HDFC, which reported its results for the quarter ended March over the weekend, expects loan offtake to rebound in the medium term. CEO Kiki Mistri expects loan disbursements to rise to 85 to 95 percent of normal levels by the fourth quarter of this year. In an interview with Bloomberg Quint, he said HDFC is offering the moratorium to all its customers and so far 21% of the company's borrowers have taken the offer. In the telecom space, PTI has reported that Bharti Airtel's promoter Bharti Telecom plans to raise $1 billion via stake sale to become debt-free. The promoter firm plans to dilute 2.75% stake at a floor price of 558 rupees per share through a secondary placement of equity. The report, which quoted unnamed sources, said that the deal was likely to have been closed yesterday evening. In international news, protests on the streets of central Hong Kong roared back on Sunday as police clashed with protesters over a proposed national security law. China's National People's Congress will bypass Hong Kong's legislature to impose sweeping anti-sedition laws that could drastically undermine civil liberties in the semi-autonomous city. Meanwhile, China condemned the US adding 33 Chinese entities to a trade blacklist, a move that risks potential retaliation from Beijing as tensions between the world's two biggest economies deteriorate further. The US Department of Commerce on Saturday expanded its so-called entities list, which restricts access to American technology and other items to include 24 Chinese companies and universities that it said had ties to the military and another nine entities it accused of human rights violations in Xinjiang. China's Foreign Ministry Wang Yi has said that the US should give up its wishful thinking of changing China, warning that some in America were pushing relations into a new Cold War. In international markets, oil rose as the head of the International Energy Agency forecasts that demand for oil will recover more than expected. As of this morning, Brent crude was trading at $35.76 to the barrel. 
U.S. equities ended Monday's session mostly flat, but the early rises in the Asia-Pacific region have started the day strong. And with that, it's over to Agam Vakil for the trade setup for the day in India. Morning, Agam. How are we looking at the start of our trading week? Good morning, Alex, and good morning, listeners. We're back after a long weekend, and there is much to catch up on. Asia has opened higher, and the SGX Nifty futures is trending with marginal gains. Once again, we start with important earnings, and right at the top, we have HDFC Limited, where we did see 12% growth in its net interest income, but there was also a drop in profit coming in at around 2232 crores against 2860 crores and this was largely on account of higher provisioning taken by the NBFC. Moving on we had a strong quarter for UPL where revenues rose 31% year on year net profits was up two and a half times and both the headline numbers were ahead of expectations. There was a 330 basis points improvement in EBITDA margins coming in at around 19.5%. However, and this was after taking in an exceptional loss of 171 crores in the current quarter related to the integration of Arista. We have a disappointing quarter for GSW Steel where revenues declined 20%. And net profit was down nearly 85%, and margins also contracted substantially. There was an exceptional loss of 805 crores during the quarter, taken on account of impairment provisions. Now, in the retail sector, DMART Operator Avenue Supermarts did see a steady quarter with revenues growing 23% year on year and net profit jumping 20, or rather 41%. Now, EBITDA margins did come in at around 6.7% versus 7.5%, and that was largely because of the company could not sell a whole lot of apparel and general merchandise products which command higher margins. What was more concerning was that the management suggested that there was a 45% decline in the month of April in the total sales and that perhaps could very well weigh down on the earnings for the first quarter as well. Moving on, Indian pharma sector will be in the spotlight after the World Health Organization has suspended the trial of hydrochloroquine as COVID-19 treatment over certain safety concerns. We'll be watching out for some of these names from the pharma sector. We also have Bharti Airtel, which will be in focus on account of a certain block deals, where it looks to raise 7,500 crores via a secondary placement. Entity Bharti Telecom will sell up to 2.75% equity with a floor price set at 558 rupees per share. We have interesting news from ITC, which has acquired 100% stake in Sunrise Foods, a packaged spice maker with strong presence in eastern markets. And Motilal Oswal estimates that Sunrise has sales of 1,000 crores in FY19. Uh, ITC has not disclosed the deal amount, but it could be anywhere between 2,000 to 2,500 crores. This acquisition will likely add 7% to ITC's FMCG business. And finally, we watch out for NCC and Just Gile, which will be excluded from the futures and options segment with effect from July 31st. Now, these are just some of the stocks you can watch out for as we move into trade today. But don't forget to go through our morning edition of All You Need to Know only on BloombergQuinn.com. Thanks, Agam. And as always, thank you all for listening in. This is Alex Matthews signing off. Have a great day and an even better week ahead. I hope you enjoyed listening to All You Need to Know. Did you know that you can listen to this show on the IVM Podcast app? On the IVM Podcast app, along with this, we have a number of other shows which you think you'll enjoy. Listen to Cyrus Says with Cyrus Brocha as the host. Listen to Pesa Vesa with Anupam Gupta. The Scene and the Unseen with Amit Varma or Shunya One hosted by Shiladiti Mukhopadhyay and myself. Check out the IVM Podcast app to get more talk content that you will enjoy.